One of the most popular questions I see online is, what shoulder rest should I be using as a violinist? Well, let me tell you something. The shoulder rest is secondary to the chin rest. Don't experiment with the shoulder rest until you have looked at what you are putting under your chin. Today, I'm going to be unboxing and showing you a new purchase, a customizable cradle violin chin rest. You ready for this? It's violin time. Okay, so here we go. We're gonna open up this baby. So I'm excited to get this new trend rest because I was interviewing the author of What Every Violinist Needs to Know About the Body. And if you haven't checked out that interview, check it out in the card that I'm listing on the top of the screen here because it's a very important inter interview to, to watch because Jennifer answers the question specifically, how do you customize your shoulder rest to yourself, to your vi as a violinist? Now, she answered that the shoulder rest is not as important as customizing the chin rest first. So this is why I wanted to buy the cradle chin rest. And actually, what I really want to do is get a customizable chin rest. But at the moment, because it's pandemic, I can't get a customizable, a customized fit from a, a proper fitter in New York City. Hey, it's me from a year later from the future. Make sure you stick around to the end of the video where I show you my setup a year later. So you get to see the update and what's going on. Okay. See you later. So I'm just going to get this cradle for now and experiment. So it comes with two chin plates. One's higher than the other. I believe. And we've got this to mount to the instrument. Okay. I'm going to have to figure this one out. And we've got different heights for the posts. And I ordered an extra hex key. That was a good recommendation from my student. Thank you, Jacqueline. She recommended that I get a second one in case I lose one of these. Okay, so this is an extra that I will tuck away and put in my case. Nice pro tip. Thank you, Jacqueline. And this is to uh, screw open these, but I hear that this is kind of a very dangerous thing that could scratch your instrument. So this is just going to be my backup which I will leave in this little Ziploc bag and put it in my case later. Okay, so this material seems uh, like a very smooth and tacky plastic, which I kind of like. I have tried this before. Uh, I had a student who lent me hers, which was very, it was, which was very nice of her. Thank you, Jacqueline. So I had a, a chance to test it out and I thought, oh, this is going to make you sweat. It doesn't. I'm very surprised and pleasantly surprised. So I've got my little tool here. How cute that is a little violin to help uh, you access your other violin so i'm just going to loosen this first before i attempt to um, get it on my violin so as i mentioned it's really important to get the height of the chin rest properly fit to you and your the neck your length of your neck because if you raise the shoulder sorry if you raise the violin too high because of a very high shoulder rest you create a height of the instrument on your body that impacts your bow arm. Okay, we're back. I have changed the angle so that's no longer digging upward into the inside of my jaw. I have it so it pretty much feels like my center mounted chin rest, my old one. So right now it's for me, tipping down at kind of a ski slope angle, just a tiny bit, and no longer is going to be up, upward, it's going to be down for me. And I have rotated it to my liking. And so far, without any shoulder rest, it feels pretty nice. So I'm aiming again for neutral positioning of my skull, like this. Now, if any, at, at, at any point I want to lose the side of the contact here, I'm going to gently from the AO joint tip. So just as Jennifer Johnson taught me in the interview, if you haven't seen it, be sure to see to watch it because she did explain it to, to us in the interview. You gently tip the skull so that a little bit of weight, skull weight, 
is now supporting the instrument. Does this feel comfortable? Well, I have to get used to it. I may have to adjust this angle a little bit. Um, but don't forget that I will have some support with, from this contact point here on the inside of the thumb, the base of the index finger when I'm not needing it to vibrate. And there's also going to be some counter pressure from the bow. There. So I'm just resting again, this review here, that the, the, the instrument is resting on the shelf, which is the collarbone. So there is where I'm going to place, you can even hear it, yeah, a little percussion on my collarbone. And the point of contact here is from thumb if I'm not dropping the head. Once I lose this, then I, then I drop the head a little bit of weight onto there. Okay, I may have to adjust that angle. Adjusting this here, this screw here, allows me to do this rotation here. But that's not the movement that I'm looking for. I'm looking to take this angle and make it I can't see what I'm doing here. I'm trying to, to bring that level so it doesn't cut into my jaw. So I am going to loosen. I don't know if you can see this either. Uh, these two screws here. I'm going to start poking around there. Okay, so there's one screw there. And inside, if you can see this one and this one allows me a lot of movement. Okay, so I can actually do a rotation and I can bevel, do a beveling of, oh, it's hard to show in this angle. You can do, yeah, this tip it so that this is higher up into your jaw or tip it so that it is mm, lower that way. Okay. Okay, so let's tighten it back. Righty tighty, lefty loosey. And turn to the right. This is going to be a before and after test. So here is the before. And this is the after, now that I have the cradle chin rest on. honest, I don't know if I think that's an improvement. Let me know if you hear a difference in the sound between my old rest and this new rest. I don't think I hear an improvement, but I'd be curious to hear the recording after. Okay, type in the comments below, will you? And if this video is of any interest or of any help, could you please do me a favor and click the like button, subscribe, and of course, hit the notification bell because I have actually more videos coming. So I will come back in a week's time or a couple days time and I'll do a follow up with this and show you what it's like. Okay, it's eight days later and I have been trying to get used to this cradle chin rest. And the operative word here is trying. I have to admit, I had really high hopes for this because I thought it would be really easy and would make my neck really relaxed and the height would fill up the gap here between collarbone and jaw. However, yesterday I woke up with a very stiff neck and I think it's because I am trying to get used to this chin rest. And I've been playing with both shoulder rests and without, and I find both, I'm unaccustomed to both. This is comfortable as some sometimes only when I'm supporting the instrument with my left hand. That's when I feel that this instrument is resting on the shelf of my collarbone, which is good. However, maybe it's just a matter of me not being used to playing without a shoulder rest for at least a couple of decades. So because of that, I'm still trying to hold the instrument here between this space, especially because it's so slippery here. And I fear that I will, especially in high positions, when I get up to this position, I lose this thumb contact here. And that's when I must grasp the instrument between my chin and my collarbone. And I've, I'm so afraid of dropping the instrument. And you know why? It's because I actually did drop my instrument in the pit. I actually was playing Sleeping Beauty and it, it I was not using a shoulder rest at the time and it dropped. So I, I don't want that ever to happen again. So this is, I don't know, it's not quite there for me. And then I add the shoulder rest, my Voight, 
uh, shoulder rest. And then I'm more accustomed to that feeling. It feels like it's not going to slip. See, I can actually do this without f- flipping out that it's going to drop. So I like this, but I have to admit, it still gets me very uncomfortable. I'm finding tension when I still go up to a high position. So, so I still feel like my neck is still doing the same thing, but just higher. And the height, the higher height is not actually helping. I'm not sure whether I just need to get used to this or whether this, I need to keep moving this around. I'm just not cut accustomed. I'm very used to my old flesh chin rest. So uh, if you recall that the sound changed as soon as I put this on, I was told that as soon as you put a chin rest um, to on the side instead of the center mount, it actually focuses some of the, the lower register. It may compress some of the the uh, the lower register of the, of the instrument. So that was interesting. I did notice that sound change. Right now, it's not a great time to compare because I just got my fiddle back from the shop and the seams were open and a crack was developing underneath. So that was really impacting my sound before. And now it's all fixed up. It's all shiny. It looks really pretty. Um, and it sounds great now. So I'm not exactly sure how this chin rest is uh, affecting the sound. I mean, obviously I heard a difference. Maybe I'll put back my flesh chin rest now that is all fixed up and, and compare. And maybe I'll show that to you. Okay, it's a year later after I tried the cradle chin rest. And spoiler alert, I did not stick with it. Mm-hmm. I actually went back to my flesh chin rest and then finally a year later I went to Montreal and tried out a custom fitted Peter Purich chin rest. It's beautiful. It matches my Postiglione violin quite beautifully actually. I like the fact that um, it has a bit more of surface area for my, my jaw. With the cradle I somehow I'm accustomed to really gripping, which is probably not the best habit, but there, there you are. I have a, a need for some surface area and this chin rest does give me that surface area. Actually, the flesh did give me quite a bit of surface area, which I really did like. However, as Peter has helped me understand that this did not have enough of a dip, a cup, a cradle for my jaw. And as he pointed out, it was causing me to slip out and away, slip out and away from the instrument. Now with this chin rest, there's a bit more of a cradle and this hook, as he calls it, this hook helps me grab the instrument. So it becomes extremely comfortable, more so than, than the flesh. I found this extremely comfortable, but the hook is not as present except for this bump here. So that tiny bump, was comfortable for, for me for, oh gosh, many years, almost 20 years, but I find this hook very comfortable. And I also experimented with different shoulder pads at Peter's. We used a lot of foam creations that he had made, and we discovered that the foam was actually dampening the sound. So I'm still using my uh, Voigt copy shoulder rest. So with a shoulder rest, and this Peter Purich chin rest is working quite nicely. So that's it. Thanks for watching this video. See you in the next one.